So why don't you introduce that someone right there that is on your lap? We have a new dog. We have a His new dog. Yeah, you name so is Mopi. Mopi, which means uh, cute. No, it means like babe or like Schatje in Dutch. Mopi. Schatje. Schatje. Dutch is such a beautiful language. Like you've never heard someone say beautiful until you hear stretchen. Schatje. Schatje. Moppy. Schatje. So yeah, we have a French bulldog now there to keep go. Matteo company, so keep me company. I take it everywhere. Exactly. Like it's, uh, as you can tell, it's uh, baby practice right there. <laughs> she takes it everywhere. She's like this, like, yeah, we are those people. We're those people. <laughs> we now. are those people now. Anyway, so part two of the uh, obesity and uh, visceral fat podcast. I yeah. wanted to put things in perspective first before we move on to inflammation, uh, insulin resistance, and the link to, to depression. Before we go there, um, I, again, I want to put it in perspective because I think it's needed. So I want to go back for a second to what the idea of depression is, right? So as we saw in the last podcast, you have two forms of depression. You have the somatic, which is physically, I don't have energy, versus cognitive, which is mentally, I don't have energy. So you could tell that cognitive depression, I don't have energy mentally, could be like you lost a spouse, you hate your life, you hate your job, you just lost uh, the will to fight, yeah. right? but mentally, right? Whereas the somatic one is you lost the will to fight physically. Now, we know that the system is prediction versus observation, right? There's the Bayesian brain. So that means that that difference between uh, the whole system, the whole point of life is to fight entropy, is to fight the difference between prediction and observation. That's really the thing, right? Is to diminish that gap, that what is error. called the somatic error. Exactly. Right. So now imagine that you create an observation a, that is that freeze mode physically, what they call depression. Again, depression is the wrong word because we have associated other things to it. Let's use the freeze mode uh, term, right? So you have a freeze mode physically that is given to you through visceral fat. And I'm going to go into this a little bit toward the end of the podcast as well. Visceral fat causes a freeze mode, right? So that means physically you have no energy, but mentally you do at first. So, but you feel, you know, that at your body is not responding at first. And I think women especially will go like, well, no, this is not who I want to be. My body is not doing what I want. I hate being tired. I hate my body. My body is not doing what I want. Right. So you're like, well, I'm going to make it right. But let's say instead of taking care of your alimentation, your nutrition, instead of taking care of your training, you just try to will yourself forward. So you go like, this is who I want to be. You go even harder into your work. You go harder into things of life, not understanding that actually that feeling of I am tired during the day has nothing to do with your soul, but has to do with the fact that you're in a freeze mode physically because of visceral fat has profound issues on you. Yeah, but your soul's getting challenged, your identity is getting right. challenged. Right, exactly, on a daily basis because it's not happening. And again, the system being prediction observation is pulling you toward the freeze mode that is the one consistent thing. Yeah. So how long before your mind meets your body there in the freeze mode? How long can you fight mentally against that physical fatigue that is a reality, therefore, the observation. So if I hear it correctly, you're saying right that your your body will be is in that freeze mode and it will go on like that until your mind is in that same freeze mode so the prediction and observation match? Exactly. Is that Yeah. Well how could it be any different? Exactly. Right. So now that would explain anxious depression. You know, you drive, you drive, you drive. This is what I want to be. This is, this is, this is. I hate being tired. So you have anger, more energy. Yeah, but at the end. Your soul getting challenged. You feel, yeah, right, you so you feel anxious. And what is anxious is not a sympathetic drive toward producing more energy so that you can feel more energy so that you can be better. But every single time it hits the wall of the freeze mode that is created by the reality of the visceral fat that is basically putting the emergency brake on the car. So you try to accelerate, but the brake won't let you. How long before you stop accelerating? In that case, it's not the best analogy, but you get the idea. So that would explain anxious depression, which means 
you build up the anger, the rage of being tired all the time of hitting that. And, and then, and then, but every single time your body just pulls you down, pulls you down, pulls you down. And every single time it pulls you down, it ships at your identity as your will to go forward. Cause it's like, we can't do this. Yeah. How long before, how much fight do you have in you? If someone keep telling in your ear, you can't do this. Oh, how long before you quit? Because what I'm saying is it's a matter of time, but you will. Because again, the system is prediction versus observation. They have, you have to diminish the somatic error. You, if you do not take care of the visceral fat, when we're gonna go into this, then maybe you can't win. So it's a matter of not if, but when your prediction is gonna match your observation. Remember, you have two ways, three ways of fixing the problem. You can change the observation, you can make the world be what you want, you can change the way you feel or you can change your prediction. So how long before your mind reaches the state of your body in that sense? Maybe that's what anxious depression is, is you keep building up until you crash and then eventually you can't go but anywhere. Because you need to, to match again. Because there is no mind. other way to match yeah. it because you can't beat that system. So there's a context for you. Mm -hmm. So what is that system of the visceral fat? I thought I need to go into this before we can move forward into inflammation and all that stuff. If we say visceral fat, we're saying that subcutaneous fat, you know, like it might not be pretty, but it doesn't matter. You know, the fat below under the yeah. skin, right? It doesn't matter. So it's not a visual thing. It's literally the fat in between your organs. So, you know, like all that area has a name. It's called the enteric nervous system as well. That's what englobes the whole stuff. Enteric? Enteric system. System. And that, en that is all the organs that are it's, it's in the organs. midsection. It's the organs in the midsection, right? It's part of what is called the enteric system. And there's a nervous system into, into there. And then there's a gut flora and everything. So if we decompose the system we're talking about, we are talking about the enteric nervous system that is the cover of all that stuff, right? That produces the 95% of the serotonin of the body. The serotonin that is produced in your brain, but it's also uh, produced in your body, and it's the enteric nervous system that produces it. It produces um, dopamine, it produces a number of hormones. It's another brain that we have. We have a brain here. That brain, so control this area, right? So you have that already, the nervous system. Now you have the gut flora. What is very interesting about the gut flora, I met many podcasts about this, it seems to be a bunch of about 100 trillion little aliens that seem to have a tremendous uh, action on behavior. For example, when we talk about depression, we saw in that, I was talking about that in the last podcast, that 80% uh, of people that were tested, that were depressed, were lacking specific two colonies of bacteria. What if the other 20% didn't have that? Well, because they were depressed on the cognitive, but not on the somatic. Because they didn't look at that in that study, because they just said depressed. So what if that, the gut flora is also part of the somatic depression. What if your nutrition would increase visceral fat, but also change your gut flora? If it changes the gut flora, first of all, it changes behavior, right? The visceral if, if fat- change your whole state then. Then your visceral fat has to have maybe, and that's what I would like to test, unfortunately, there's no study on that. Maybe the visceral fat on top of other things we're gonna talk about right now, Maybe there's also an, a physical action. Maybe it's pushing your organs a certain way. It's displacing them. It's putting pressure on the stomach. It's affecting the digestive system. By the way, we, are, we haven't even talked about the fact that nutrition affects the digestive system. Oh, yeah. We haven't even talked about that. You know, acid, stomach acidity. If you have too much carbs or stuff like that, there's just there's that alone, right? So, but no matter what, the enteric nervous system is the second brain. So that one is influenced by nutrition. Gut flora is influenced by nutrition. Visceral fat has a profound effect on organ positioning as well as the enteric nervous system, as well as the gut flora. So it's the whole enteric system, basically. And we see that that links directly to depression. So my point with all this would be to say, like, maybe you cannot win this. If your gut health and gut, I don't just mean the gut flora, I mean also the, the entire area. The entire midsection area. The entire midsection. But we look at it from either the gut flora or from a nervous system perspective. What, is, what if it's a physical area as well? What if that visceral fat creates specific issue? We know that it creates issue with uh, uh, um, inflammation. That's gonna be the next podcast. And we know insulin resistance also has something with depression. That'll be the podcast after that. But what if the area itself, is 
of importance. So, enteric nervous system again, gut flora, but also the physical area. Because, uh, for example, there's the, what is called, something patch right here that is a lymph mode, right? That is one of the things where we used to put the kettlebell, right? That has an effect on sympathetic trigger, like the, uh, I'll, I'll put it somewhere, I can't remember, like someone will uh, say that on the comments, a St. Peter's patch, is that what it's called here? That is, uh, you know, the spot that was hurting is St. Peter's, I think it's St. Peter's patch. It's a bunch of lymph nodes that are highly connected to the sympathetic uh, nervous system. So there's that. What about the four pack that I talk about all the time that is linked to anxiety? The whole stomach area that seems to hurt, like the kettlebell that we put here, the oblique opener. The muscle there have a tremendous impact on uh, tomorrow and emotion mapping and a number of things we, we talked about in strong fit. So as right it's here, still right, is still the, the body, and in Chinese stuff is center of the soul, right? The, the hara point right below the belly button, which is the mathematical, you know, convergence point, there to our internal talk, external talk that Da Vinci said, the hara point is also in the Japanese, the center of energy and everything. So what if there's not, it's not just energy and stuff like that? What if there's also the physical component of it? Like if the organs are not placed a certain way, we, it leads to massive issues. What if that's the freeze mode as well? So the visceral fat would not just be creating inflammation. It would also displace things in a certain way that makes it... It will just disalign the midsection. For example, right. So that would explain the four pack. Like if you have inflammation in your stomach, it starts to push the four pack forward. It starts to create his own set of issues and, and then just it keeps on going like this and like this. So, so what do you mean when you, s when you say you can't win it? Well, um, what I mean by that is the observation coming from your body will be freeze at all times. You have to understand that the, the, the observa obs observation, observation right, so of the body will interoce always... Yeah, interoception means um, signals from your body to you. Exteroception is conception of, of the outside world. Interoception is conception of the inside world. So all those organs, you, all the things, your legs are what, send signals to the whole thing. For example, to the brain, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The two signals that are the strongest is the heart and the gut. Because if the heart stops, you die. You don't necessarily need your brain to function but you need your heart. The second your heart stops, you die. So that is the strongest signal of the body, interoception-wise, is your heart. It's not your brain, it's your heart. The second strongest one is the gut. It's been measured, you can see on the, on the thing, is your gut. So your gut is constantly, it's a brain, sending signals. So you have to understand, again, it sends hormone, serotonin, dopamine, stuff like mm -hmm. that. It sends an electromagnetic pulse, just like the heart does. The heart being the main one, the heart is like a metronome. It decides the rhythm of the body. But the stomach does a lot of things like that. It's a, it's a constant. It's constantly talking very very loudly to your brain about things happening because the the system knows it's first is the heart, second is the gut. Right. So your gut is constantly telling you freeze, 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 freeze. How long do you have before you start to go okay? How long can you plow into, I'm fine, I'm going to do this, I'm going to have energy, I'm going to work out, I'm going to do that, while your body is constantly telling you, no, 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 we don't have energy, no, we're in freeze mode, no, with this, no, with this. I mean, and imagine, like, oh, we talked about this, like, women seem to have a very hard time being tired during the day. For example, cortisol at 2 o'clock will have an impact, whatever. But your body would be constantly in freeze, constantly taking away energy, not having energy. But it's not that you're not producing the energy, so you don't have access to it for uh, be being in freeze, because that's really what the freeze does. It's not like you're not producing the energy, it's just you don't have access to it. Yeah. So you would have no access to energy. So mentally, you'd be fine, but you would feel a low energy state physically constantly. So again, that would piss you off, make you want to go harder, saying, I'm not that person. All right, then you go up. But then the signal on the other side never stops going. But then also, Ever. if you keep that cycle, um, the crash become greater and greater because every time the soul gets more, more challenged yeah. and challenged. Yeah, and you, so you lose a little bit more. So eventually you will make you you bring yourself down, literally. And then you now you're in a retarded depression. So it's possible that um, an anxious depression is a somatic depression, whereas a retarded depression is cognitive and somatic. 
and should use some interesting ideals. A lot. Right, but that, that means that if the nutrition and the exercise will not be um, done correctly, then you can't win this. So, but again, what if there's a physical area? So that would mean that you have to have nutrition in order. So the protocol and stuff like that. Obviously, sleep and all that stuff. We're going to talk inflammation, insulin resistance. But now we're talking about, again, not the fat on the waist, no, the fat between the organs. So that means that training-wise, we would need to engage those muscles more. So that means more rotation. That means the oblique opener. That means reducing the size of the waist, but also making sure that all those deep muscles, so the psoas, for example, is part of that. But it's not only that. It's the whole thing. It's all the obliques, internal and external. It's like there's so many muscles in there. It's impossible to list them all. I mean, um, but like suddenly, rotation work would be important, right? Uh, again, having a smaller, like we talked last time, having a smaller waist would be, would be very important in that aspect. So maybe there's a physical work toward the core that has to be taken into account better, I would say, yeah. on top of the nutrition, on top of all that. So maybe that's where the protocol worked with like no protein during the day because it was limiting the inflammation because your, your digestive system not being able to digest fully protein during the day because of circadian rhythms and all the stuff I talk about in the protocol. So that'd be one, right? Reducing the inflammation of the gut. That's another one. Certain food, quality of food, as much as timing of food would matter. But then after you go into the training, so doing enough cardio that you're leaner so that you can diminish not the fat under the skin, but the visceral fat. So maybe that would be the point of the cardio. It's not the water retention. It's literally going at the visceral fat. And that's obviously cardiovascular activity is, is, is important, but maybe there's also like activity around the core itself that is very important. Hence, all the stuff we see about the, the psoas, the oblique opener, the, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I that mean. without, but what I like about that is the idea that um, taking care of this area suddenly. So it's not just the stomach, it's not just the gut flora, it's not just the nervous system, it's also the muscles with this, the large muscle. That fits a very strong, strong fit idea that I've had for a long time. That goes with the Greeks. They've always said that your stomach is the, you know, is the senate of, of the, like, that everything goes through the stomach. And it, that, that, that's very much the Asian also idea. You know, the center of the body is there. Uh, if you look at Da Vinci, you always put like, the navel like right below the navel like that's a very important spot like you could take acupuncture you could take a lot of um, spiritual stuff asian spiritual stuff are there but also a lot of mathematical things that link there the whole internal external torque starts with there yeah. um, the enteric nervous system the the second heart the it second it the second a brain lot of things. it would explain a lot of stuff like, like, from, like from a psychology perspective yeah yeah, yeah. So moving more, like for example, um, CrossFit, you know what it does? Makes you bend and bend, bend and bend, bend and bend. So you're doing this on the stomach constantly. You're moving it. So maybe moving the stomach in all those things becomes, because there's so many yoga practices about this. Yeah. Like even the stuff to, for the, you know, like moving your stomach like that for digestion, because it gives you a greater quality of life. We've seen that there's certain things with, you know, undigested red meat and, you know, and we've seen that with cancer, with things like, because now there's the, there's the, the talk about rice with cancer that come to mind now if I start to go there, uh, which is a defense mechanism, like suddenly it would make, it would make a lot of sense. It's maybe this area is far more than, um, than we make it out to be, even from a physical perspective. Yeah. Well, for, for, from a personal experience, once I started to connect to the low apps, there were some freaky things. Not freaky right. things, but I mean like yeah. things that come together and also uh, back then during sprinting uh, was a different, completely different experience. Right, so we all, I, I think the people are listening to this, you've all been doing the oblique opener for long enough. Sometimes, once in a while, you create some interesting mm -hmm. interoception uh, things. Yeah. The sandbag carries when they get really hard. They create some interesting, where is the sandbag resting? Right on the stomach. Um, is that where the sometimes the, you can reach some very interesting emotional state with the sandbag? Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you feel like, I remember on the sled when you're cramping everywhere, like your stomach is, is getting like into weird places. Like I'm starting to wonder if that's not the... But do you also, s s like lo knowing this, looking back at yourself at moments where you were very arch, 
as in yeah. like very here wh which stage you were in because when I think now back at like even so the stress, at six yeah. si 16 in certain certain competitions I can remember being super arch and now I understand I think a lot better why mm -hmm. like but food stress like all of those but things even like the stress like because I've seen like that's more emotional mapping but I've seen that so many times like whenever people are stressed the four pack is a stone uh, we've done a lot of work again about the oblique opener, about relaxing all that. I have something that I do on the stomach, you know, when I grab and I make people exhale a certain way and relaxing their stomach. And right away, you, you see an emotional response, like you almost want to cry uh, because there's a relaxation finally. There's the sympathetic innervation right here on the side. There's the, like, I can give you like a, a long list of stuff that would connect there. Like it's almost, um, the, I mean, like I worked on this for so much. What if like the whole, you know, like the whole idea was depression is somatic, but what if a huge part of that somatic part of that observational part physically comes through that area far more than, than, than we want to know? Because remember the Greeks said it, but then here comes the Christian faith coming into it that started to pull the center of the body from here where it always was toward the top of the head because that's the soul. That was the very much a Christian idea. Well, before that, if you, if you look at it, why wouldn't it be? Because if there's all those like life is created here, food is digested here, the 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 chakra points are here. When you go into when s bad things happen and you go into a bowl, where are you going toward? Yeah. So toward that spot, and that spot that is the center of the internal, yeah. the center of the body. This is where internal torque and external torque come from. All movement go toward that spot or away from it. Aggression goes away from it. Inter looking inside goes toward this center. Internal torque brings toward that spot. This is a Da Vinci spot of the center of the body, right? So what if the center of the body is here, not there? We all look at it as a spiritual thing because thoughts are here. What if they are not nearly as much there as we think? What if we cannot have the thoughts we want to have if this is not clear? Let me put it this way to be nicer because that's not exactly what I think. Because I made a a podcast saying we are venom yeah um, I'm, I'm glad to know you watched my podcast before we got together um, so the idea was um, there is it's the not gonna we're gonna go at this I, I got to you because of who you are not of what you do Julian. there you go um, <laughs> um, we have the the monkey but then we have the gut flora which is all again a hundred trillion bacteria that's about they are divided in colonies and I was like so who decides the behavior the monkey oh, or yeah. the alien I remember it oh, yeah, of course you do the no I remember it <laughs> too, too late <laughs> too late, <laughs> too late. Um, usually so I can, I can I, I was like easy yeah you can I can blink myself out of yeah, this exactly. so it was like I'm, I'm blonde <laughs> um, it was are we the alien or are we are we the monkey or are we the alien and so that's why I call it we are venom because what if we're the alien Yes. behavior wise right because the gut flora seems to impact so much like again I did a, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll do another podcast on this but the, the behavior even social behavior seemed to be explained mostly through gut flora or at least it's never only one thing but it was a big chunk of it we know a very good example of that yep my dear daughter like the second we change our food it's not the same person what if but what if your person what if the center of your person is here what if this is an invention? What if this is what Western society, Christian faith, is trying to tell us that the center of the person is here because that's the soul, right? And maybe the center of spirituality is there, but what if the center of the person that lives in this world is here? So maybe there's two different pools. Yeah, there's the spiritual here, but the center of the person is there. But like the, the, that that thought is not something that you can almost bear because then it will mean that you have don't have as much control that's a foundation of, of the that's of a foundation your, of, of the western world is that as people think you i think I therefore think. i am the, yeah. the foundation of the christian thought is here and make no difference the christian thought is the western world sorry mopi sorry, the, mopi. okay so maybe the, what if there's two persons then up let, let me not just chop at it and say that there is no, like, you know, the Christian faith was ridiculous. Which but we're talking conceptual, conceptually now, right? It was we're not talking uh, more than that. We're talking 
culturally, we're talking about the foundation of mankind. Before the Christian faith, like, and the whole, I think, therefore I am, which is very much a Christian thing, where, you know, like, because if you look, the body's dirty, and only the soul is clear and everything, like, that's, like, people forget, but this is how we as a society, Western society, grew Nothing up. And by the way, that's not an attack to the Christian faith. It's more the his, the background of no, how it's we an, got it's, to it's that. No, it's not an attack because I grew up in it, and that is my culture. My culture is Christian. I grew up in France. I am a product of the Western world, probably so. By the way, we we came up with so much philosophy, all that stuff. But it started with the Greeks that were not Christians. And if you look at the way the Greeks saw it, and if you look at the ancient cultures of them, or evolution of mankind, because it's not just the Western world. There are other very important cultures that were developed. You could say that Socrates, so what I call Socrates is a grandfather of philosophy, which is a foundation of the Western world. But then Christianity came about a thousand years later, up a bit more, and no, not Jesus Christ, but really Christianity started with Emperor uh, Constantine and just check history books. Um, that's when really things started to change. But and then into an idea of where everything is here. The, the, and this is where I'll disagree with even Master Yoda, when he said like, you are not just this body, this piece of flesh, you are just a light of energy and everything. Like, that's very close to the idea of the soul and everything, which is what we see, you know, with the Jedi after they die. I would disagree. But what that if would means that there's a certain immorality to you that right, which it's I not a reality. Mm, anyway, but let's say there is the center of spirituality, all that stuff, whatever. What if you anchor to this world? is here. What if your anchor to the prediction is here? But what if your anchor to the to the observation is there? Yeah. What if it's a mix between this and the heart? Those are your anchors to reality. We do not live in reality. We live in a universe that we create that is the closest to the uni universe we live in. Because perception is reality. Right. So perception for what? We think perception from here. What if we're wrong? What if the anchor to reality is actually here? The heart and that area right there. What if that is what really influences our thoughts and our patterns the most? Maybe the most, or let me put it this way, at least far, far more than we understand. So in a way we're saying it maybe on a daily basis, like, oh, I, I'm going to trust my gut on this, or I'm going to yeah. gut instincts, or uh, that doesn't feel right in my, in my stomach. Like yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. All that. What if there's a reality to it? Because if you look like, at least when it comes to anxiety or depression, I can center that here. Like, I've, 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 so that, that whole study about uh, visceral fat and everything, but me as a coach, throughout my seminars, and that's the whole emotional mapping started when I did, it started when I did the oblique opener, and then I saw, I, I, I created the oblique opener because I couldn't engage my obliques correctly. I did it for me, as usual. And I'm starting to do it, and I'm like, oh, that feels like very strong. That seems to be a great exercise. And where people are like, really? Really? And it's like everything that I do, it starts as like, yeah, well, yeah. And then it turns into something that I didn't foresee at all, right? And suddenly the oblique opener, we started to see changes. We saw women getting their, their periods back. That lost them from... That lost them for years, and suddenly they get their periods back. We saw people having very strong emotional reactions, some uh, freeing stuff. We saw even like sexually help some people. Uh, we, we saw so many of that stuff starting to, which makes sense when you look at it from a mechanical perspective. But what if there's a, there's a deeper structure there, that there's a profound relationship between that physical area of the body and the way we're going to deal with certain things? Because again, prediction versus observation. What if this is one of the center of observation of the body? Let me phrase it like that. What if this is the first, uh, the second, or 1A, 1B, center of observation of the body, well, the other one being the heart. If the way we speak right now is true, then we should take a lot more care of this midsection area. I mean, I believe, and then that'll be the point, because then we're going to go into inflammation and insulin resistance, but I think taking care of the heart and taking care of this area, those are the two centers of the observation system, yeah. and I think more and more we are trying to say that they don't matter but then he puts nutrition he puts ro exercise with rotation he puts just any exercise core exercise done correctly right the external oblique opener all that stuff he puts it into a 
where they belong into the behavior side of things and only far more clearly. Which makes them even more interesting than they already were. Yeah, which is never what I had in mind when I came up with it, ever. But yeah. suddenly it opened doors where you go like, shit. Yeah. So from an anxiety to depression perspective, what if we have, so like that's why maybe psychotherapy when people are depressed that only works from the cognitive side. It cannot work from the somatic side. So maybe this is why exercise works better than Xanax, it's, which has been proven, the yeah, antidepressants. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, exercise works better, it's been proven. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's one of the reasons. Yeah, there are others, lactate and stuff like that, but maybe taking care of that area is actually a big, big thing. Right, so I wanted to put that idea out there, to put it under context, yeah. so that I can go into inflammation and insulin resistance in the next two podcasts. Because then inflammation we will kind of fit into the same pattern, and in a way insulin resistance as well, because the, the enteric system and insulin resistance are very much linked. Very, 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 very much linked. And even like the visceral fat and then the cytokines, like the inflammation being... Um, uh, produce that will go all the way to the brain that starts here as well so but I don't want it to be narrowed down to things like insulin resistance I think it goes further like there's a physical reality to this yeah so maybe a weird weird question but it pops in up in my head but would that also mean then the places where you hold on to more visceral fat is where you have more inflammation well more uh, Charles mm -hmm. Pauline Quinn would agree Charles Pauline Quinn, an entire thing there, where he could tell where you were holding fats, what you were deficient in, um, vitamin or stuff like that. But there was, he keeps going a little bit further. And then a guy like Charles Thibodeau started to, um, Charles Thibodeau, I can't remember his first name, started to talk about neurotypes and everything. And then there's an entire thing uh, with that as well. And then like we're starting to go into things that I've been talking about and studying for a long time now. But the key is, who cares if you don't have a physical, like how do we do it? Like a lot of the stuff out there works for a while then it stops working because it's lacking the fundamental understanding of the human body. We're missing pieces. And that's what I'm trying to find is every time, like a Thibodeau has something called a neurotype training and it works for six to eight weeks like any new program. But eventually it always fails because it's missing some very key components because all of that were done from studies for 70s, 80s that missed the fundamental idea of prediction versus observation, which is dividing things in those two that are so important. If you can't integrate the Carl Friston's work into whatever was done 70s, 80s, 90s, then you cannot be correct. It's missing too big of, a, of an important piece that the body is predictive, not reactive. That's it's such a, it changes everything when we look at the body this way. It does. Carl Friston changed all of this, which is don't understand yet. He, he'll require 50 years, uh, if not more, and then one day we'll understand how much Carl Friston changed our understanding of uh, human beings. But until we, we integrate that, there's a lot of the stuff out there that is just, it's good, but it's, it's not precise enough, so it cannot work. Because all that stuff is not enough to go like, oh, this, yeah, but it's also like, well, it's four also different things, it won't work. It's also s such a big subject, you can't get it right from one point of view. You have to... And that's, there's different things, because you're always going to miss, for example, you can't talk about the entering system and not talk about the gut flora, but we know so little. We don't understand the gut flora, we don't. And it's a uh, hundred trillion aliens doing what? But the influence or behavior, and that's a fact. That is a fact that no one wants to talk about. Because what does it mean? It clashes culturally with us. As a Western Christian world, it clashes with us that the gut flora controls who we are. So we can't truly go at it. It's just because we're not comfortable with that. So I think it's the same thing with the physical aspect of the core, not moving a certain way or certain things that hurt or whatever. We don't, who massages the, the stomach? You massage your back, your pecs, you massage everywhere. Who massages the stomach? I had that, it's one, painful. I had that one time. Yeah. It's a very weird experience. Exactly. Uh, by, um, the weirdest, probably. Yeah. It was very, very, very mm -hmm. strange. Yeah. Like, I had 
like a well we did that with a kettlebell we released some stuff strange. by using that just with a kettlebell like I had that as an exercise I don't think I posted it because there's still a but number of painful. things I don't, Sorry I don't, it's, I don't it's talk very, about very it can be very painful yeah. yeah right so what if what if that pain that you feel from your stomach is just a somatic representation of the pain you feel about the world what if the map of the world is written in your stomach but not just in your stomach in your abs in all of this area what if the points where you're hurt is just a somatic presentation of the points where you're hurt in your life that's the point of emotional mapping was that what it's if? a very very deep question mm -hmm. but we've seen that the capacity to hear your heartbeat for example is a major part of interoception we see that with autism i know that when i started to put the kettlebell and started to feel my heartbeat he would calm me down. Oh, it calmed me down so much. Right, too. so it works for like the autism stuff. It's a very important part, for example. Yeah. Interoception What's awareness. Yeah. Right. That's feeling your heartbeat. If you, where do you feel? Like he, most people feel here, but you start with your stomach. So, <sighs> what if? What if? What if? The importance of carries that strengthen your your core better than anything else. Maybe just. You know, put your organs where they should. Like, I know, there's many, many questions. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> I don't have anything to say on that one. Voltaire was saying, is you don't measure the intel intelligence of someone by the answer that they give, but rather by the question that they ask. Yeah. Those are the important questions. If you can ask those questions, that means you understand. Right, so I wanted to put things in context so that we can go into inflammation. Into the next one so next we will have n n two podcasts more on the subject of depression and uh, visceral fat. Sounds yeah. good? Thank you, everybody. Wait, I need an up close for my. Oh, we need an up close with Mopi. This is Bye. Bye, everybody.